Ahoy there, my Milky Way malcontents, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. In the first part of this video, I showed you how to process a standalone Milky Way photo. Then in the second part, I showed you how you can start to make a composite Milky Way photo with a photo shot at dusk and one shot a few hours later using the same composition we talked about techniques for matching light and color so that your composite looks as seamless as possible. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can make an amazing selection and a perfect mask so that the overlap between your two photos is excellent and the composite is as seamless as possible. For reasons that will become clear later I like to layer up my photos like this so that I have whatever my foreground is on top of my Milky Way just like that. So I tend to start out using the built-in selection tools within Photoshop. In this case I'm going to use the selection brush here. And What I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to paint across the sky here on my Tufa layer and let Photoshop make a selection for me. Now you can see it was a little bit overzealous so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alter Option and I'm going to paint back out this Tufa Tower. Getting close to the edges here, paint out that section and paint out this little bit right there. Now this is going to require a little bit more accuracy and fine tuning. So I want to keep this part of course but I want Photoshop to select the sky right here. I want to keep this part of the Tufa but I want Photoshop to select that part of the sky right there. Now remember this is just an initial selection. I'm going to show you a bunch of techniques so that you can make really highly refined perfect selections but this will at least get us in the ballpark. So we have a selection we can turn that into a mask by going down here and hitting the layer mask button and what that's going to do is the exact opposite of what we want. It's going to show the sky from our Tufa layer and the ground from our Milky Way layer so all I need to do is hit Control or Command I to invert that and you can see ba bam now we've got a very sweet looking composite already and even though we made that selection super rough and super ugly, this composite looks pretty good. Now why is that? It's because we took the time to match the color and the tone between the two photos. In fact, you see here, if I zoom in this spot, for example, this is the sky from my Tufa layer. Look how close it is to color and tone from the Milky Way sky. So that's why these areas like that or like this they're not as obvious from the immediate get-go. This is why matching that color and tone is absolutely of critical importance. It makes your composites all the more seamless. But we can actually go in here and clean this stuff up with it so we have a perfectly edged selection and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Now what happens when you're painting with that selection brush is Photoshop is simply looking for edges. And what are edges? It's places where you have high contrast with the image and within the image. And what are the different kinds of contrast? Well you have color contrast, tonal contrast, and textural contrasts. And Photoshop actually gives us a way to find at least two of those, the tonal contrasts and the color contrast. So we can find the color contrast really easily. Let me deselect that layer for the time being so we have our Tufa here fully visible. If you go over to your channels palette you can see what's present within the image in all three your channels, your reds, your greens, and your blues. And what I want to do is I'm going to click through these channels until I see one that has the most contrast between the Tufa and the sky. And in this case the blue channel is the clear winner. So I could take this channel and paint on it using the selection brush and hopefully Photoshop would do a better job of selecting it but I can also give Photoshop a head start. And the way I'm going to do that is by dragging that blue channel down here to this little icon which will duplicate it. You want to make sure that you duplicate the channel before you start making any adjustments to it otherwise you're going to really pozone your image. So on this blue copy what I can do now is bring up a curves adjustment by hitting Control or Command M. Then I can grab this little hand guy, the targeted adjustment, and for example if I drag up here on my sky and then drag back down on my Tufa I'm going to start making these contrasts between the two things that much more stark. What that's going to let me do 
is make a very, very, very well-defined selection between the tufa and the sky. So, one thing I can do now, I could go back to those areas that Photoshop kind of screwed up earlier with the selection brush and painting here on the blue channel. You can see it does a much better job of finding these edges now all the way around the tufa. Now I still need to do a little bit of refinement in these areas with low contrast, that's okay. And up here like this. So now we have a new selection that Photoshop has created around the Tufa that is a little bit more, which is to say a lot more refined and shapely than our previous selection. So if I use that as my selection now, I can jump back into my RGB channel, then into my layers palette, then back onto the mask. Whoo -hoo, that is a lot of jumping for my tufa layer. Now I want to mask out the areas where the sky is still vis visible from the tufa layer. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my layer mask and I'm going to hit the brush tool by hitting B. I want to make sure I'm painting with black in normal mode. What I'm doing, I'm just going to paint in these areas now. And you'll see that in those, let me hit con controller command H will hide those marching ants. So you can really see where you need to refine that selection. Up here there were a couple of spots. Yeah, here we go. Paint in, paint in, paint in like this. In fact, why don't we just paint in all the way around all of this. There we go. There's a spot. There's a spot we got to paint in. We got to paint in over here. Painting, painting, painting. Happy little two fuzz. Paint in there, paint in over there. Paint, 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 paint. All these areas like this. Photoshop did a pretty good job on the initial selection down around in here. I don't see any other sky areas that need to be painted over. That looks pretty good. Okay, groovy. So now we've just dramatically enhanced our selection. You can see our mask is extraordinarily detailed. Looks like we need to paint in a couple of spots. I like that. Cool, cool. Now you see that the edges of the mask are uh, a little bit soft. And you know what? That's okay because you don't want zero pixel radius edges on your masks. Otherwise, the transition between the tufa layer and the sky layer is going to be too abrupt and looks looks weird. So if there's a little bit of softness to the edge of this mask, that's actually just a-okay. So there's a fine line basically between crisp, crisp masks and overly perfect masks. And it's just going to take a little bit of experimentation for you to find that. And of course you can always, if you find that your mask is too sharp, if you double click on it on the layer mask thumbnail, you can adjust the feathering of the mask like this. You can see it gets nice and soft. Alright, let me hit Alter Option, click on the deal. Now we're back to this. Now we got sky painted in on all the places where we need it. Okay, at this point we have a pretty decent looking start to our composite, right? But there's definitely a big issue, which is you can still see some of the Tufa towers from our Milky Way photo. Here you go. This, this is Tufa from the Milky Way photo. It's poking out behind our super highly detailed, super sharp, beautiful 
tufa from our dusk exposure. You can see it over here, the edges are just super soft, and that's because that's the tufa from the underlying exposure poking out. So how can we get rid of that tufa and make the composite that much cleaner? And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video in this series, so be sure to stay tuned. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoy and learn something from these videos. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.